All right, so I went ahead and put together a project. Uh, go ahead and do so. Uh, I named this project the No To Do App. You can name whatever you want, but it's always a good idea to name the same thing I named here. That way things are uniform and we don't run into a lot of issues. Okay, all right, perfect. So let's go ahead here. Uh, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, in fact, before I get rid of anything, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the project here and I'm going to go to pub specs. As we know, this app here will, will heavily rely on SQ flight, uh, which is the plugin that we need for, for us to be able to, to create databases. So I'm going to go ahead and copy from previous project you can do so i'm going to copy all of these let me see not just sq flight but others as well you will see i'm going to put right there let's make sure i'm going to format everything okay so we've got this sql flight here and if you go to previous video previous section you know exactly where to find it or you can just copy from previous projects and so that's easier and we have the path provider because we will need to get the path where our database is going to be will be living on the device either ios and android so we need that and of course we have this international here that we're going to be using later uh, which will allow us to format dates and so forth that way everything looks like something like this okay very cool all right so there we go once we have that, let's go say packages get set. Whoops, looks like something is not quite right. Right, this has to be not there. That's the wrong place. I'm going to put here. Okay, that's why I'm having issues there. Save again and do package set. It should all go well. There we go. Life is good right now. The next thing we're going to do is instead of our lib, in fact, let's go to test here and get rid of this test. I'm not going to be using this anyway. And instead of our lib here, I'm going to create a few other packages. Go create directory. First one is going to be UI. Then I'm going to have util model as such. Okay. So that way we organize our code. Very good. Let's get rid of our pub specs here. I'm going to get rid of most of this. Let's see. All of this. Gonna change a few things. And I'm going to get rid of all of this. This theming that we see here. I don't need that. There we go. I'm going to change this to no do as such and for now I'm just going to get rid of this as well but I'm going to call a new home there we go so we're going to go ahead and create our new home real quick here so for our new home I'm going to create let's go to our UI right click I'm going to create a new file dart file just call this home I'm going to say import material so we have all of that and I'm just going to say go create a stateless so there we go st stateless I'm going to call this home the moment you do that of course you will notice that we don't have this well actually we still have so that means we have to import our home dot dart perfect okay so this is nothing new here so here is where we're going to put the user interface for our home so the first thing I'm going to do actually Instead of return a container, I'm going to return a scaffold as such. And I'm going to give an app bar, say new app bar. And title, I'm going to just go ahead and say new text. But check this out. Uh, as of the latest Dart or Flutter, the latest version, so anything that has Dart 2.0, you don't have to say new anymore. You can just go ahead and say text as such and it will work but you can go but uh, you'll find me here and there using new for from just habit but if you can just go ahead and just text you don't have to create a new object pretty neat okay so i'm going to call this say just no to do as such okay and then this scaffold here i'm going to give it a background color i'm going to say colors give it black i'm going to get black 54 this black here as you can see now if you save this 
if we give it a run, let's give it a run on Android. Why not? I have it running already, so that should not be an issue. And there we go. We now have our Android app working. Let's do that with Apple or iOS as well. That way we are satisfied, hopefully. Again, remember, if you are on Windows, you will only have Android. I apologize, but iOS is for Mac users only. Of course, there's other ways you can install Mac on your machine that it's not a Mac. Right. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials online, and you can have at it. <laughs> but it's, it's worth saying that if you want to invest in creating actual uh, Android and iOS applications, it's worth it to actually invest on an actual Mac machine, okay, if you're serious about it. But there we go. It looks great. Now, you notice here it says debug now. In the previous videos, you probably saw it was saying something different. Uh, uh, it's just changed with the new Flutter doesn't matter really um, one of the questions that I've been getting from all of the students is that how do I get rid of this well it's really simple to get rid of this red little tag here okay you can actually go uh, to main here where we say material you can say debug show checked mode banner to false just like that okay if you go ahead and look you'll see that now it's gone Okay, that's a new trick that you can use. In fact, let's just keep it that way. That way we don't have that. So great, now we have our app running on both iOS, well, Android and iOS. Very cool. All right, so let's go keep going here. So what are we going to be doing next is we are going to create instead, let's go to home here, uh, for our body, whatever we're bringing in here is going to be a new, I'm going to call no to do screen as such we haven't created this no to do screen let's go to our util here uh, our ui i'm going to right click say new dart file and i'm going to create a no to do screen call this no to do underscore screen okay i'm going to just import material because that's what we do as the name indicates that this is where we're going to create the actual screen where we're going to have all of the rows so essentially where we're going to have all of this right this rows here created and all that stuff all right so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to make a stateful widget here which i'm going to call no to do screen like that just to get rid of this issue that we're having here let's go ahead and import it right away no to do screen no to do screen did I call it different no to do there we go okay much better now we're gonna be able to well still nothing I'm gonna copy this then just to make sure that it's all the same there we go no to do screen let's go here all right, there we go, now it's feasible. Okay, so it has to be the same name, otherwise, as you saw, we will have issues implementing everything. Okay, so inside here, it's a stateful widget, which means we're gonna be able to retrieve the state and change the user interface as our code also changes. That's what stateful widget really is, right? We can actually redraw the window or the view or the page of on our screen when uh, certain things happen to our screen. All right, so let's construct our user interface and all the things. So what we're gonna return here is actually a scaffold because we want to be able to get all of what scaffold really brings in, which as you can see, as you have over here, you can see we have app bar, floating action bar, which is exactly what we need, right? That's the only thing we need here for our floating. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna start with the background, I'm gonna say colors, give it a black 54, actually black 87, you'll see the difference here a little bit, not much. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say body, I'm gonna give a body of a column, which will contain all of the other widgets inside. But before we go any further, I need to add something else here, which is gonna be a floating action bar as such. Floating action bar. 
So what I want to happen when we press our new floating action bar is going to be show form dialog as such. We haven't created that yet. In fact, let's go ahead and create a local method. There we go. And we will implement everything. And at the top here, what we need to do is we need to sell tooltip. We're going to say add item. And then child is going to be new list tile. Set it correctly. Give it a title of text. Actually, it's going to be an icon. Say new icon. Say icons dot add like this. Let's give a background color of perhaps colors that red accent. Maybe that would be fun. Uh, this needs to be new icon. Let's see how things are looking. Let's go to here. There we go. Now, this is not showing anything because, of course, we haven't run in our Android. Okay, let's just keep with for now at least keep here with our iOS. Now you notice a difference here. I just now did an impromptu change here. In our original one, we have this blue, right? That's okay. We can always be a little bit naughty here. And we decided to get, in this case here, we just decided to give it a different color. You can give it any color you want. The functionality really is what matters. So I decided to give it a different color here. Okay, so now there we go. Things are looking good. Let's run this also on Android. So Android doesn't feel like they're out of place. Give it a second. There we go. All right, so in both platforms, things are working indeed. Voila. Okay. Very cool. So in this video, we're able to set things up. Uh, nothing really major that happened. Uh, I would say just a little bit of cosmetics and setting up our libraries and so and plugins and so forth. This is really good. In the next video, we'll continue the setting up and putting everything together so we can start looking into actually connecting things to the database and and then have this whole app working for us. Okay, perfect. I'll see you next.